on today's episode. I'm a great fan of gadgets and I spotted this on a, on a website and uh, was quite intrigued by it. The description is quite enticing. We can see here that it uh, apparently has a Do Home Series app to control LEDs. It's got built-in Wi-Fi, four-way LED control, LED drivers and all this other good stuff that it can can do and then we have some uh, some pretty pictures but absolutely no information on how to program it how to connect it where this app is or anything else so join me on a journey of discovery the module is as i say quite intriguing uh, i've looked on the website to do it and there's no mention of this device whatsoever which is strange so I'm guessing that in here is an 8285 and some other components. Clearly we have the Wi-Fi antenna. Looking at the pinout, we can see reset, uh, IO16, transmit and receive. What appears to be IO0, uh, VCC in the corner and ground. WBGR, so these will be the LED outputs. IO2, IO1513, I guess enable, and ADC. But I can find nowhere that actually describes the, the functions of these pins. Clearly, we know what reset, transmit, and receive are. VCC, I would hazard a guess, is 3.3 volts uh, to be compatible with the 8285. Exactly how we attach these to either individual LEDs or to an LED strip uh, at the moment is a, is a mystery. So uh, as the song goes at the moment, uh, there are more questions than answers. Being of curious mind and remembering that in the product description, it did say that there was a factory application installed. Just for grins, why don't we apply some power? And what's this? Well, a new network has appeared called Do Home underscore 093a. I wonder what happens if we try and connect to it. Any guesses what the default password is going to be? So we're connected obviously and it's given us an IP address 4.2. So if this is our IP address, I wonder the little guy is 4.0 or 4.1? Well, at 4.1 it's asking us for a, our router's SSID and password. What I'm guessing is that it's going to reboot and connect itself to my local network. So how are we going to discover what it is? Logging on to my router and looking in the wireless statistics, I have two devices currently attached to it. What I should have done when I first connected to the device was to make a note of its MAC address, but I didn't. Here, if we take the first part of the MAC address, paste it in here, we can see that that uh, address is assigned to Samsung, so that's my mobile. This address here, strangely, belongs to Expressive, in which case, bingo, we know where we are. So if we're looking for this MAC address, uh, what IP address is it? Simply type R space minus A TC4F22 so we can see that it is 7.102. So what happens if we go to 7.102? Ah, we're back to our old friend SSID and password. Perhaps it's time to break out the Do Home app and see if we can connect to it with that. When I first searched for the Do Home app, I would pretty much ignored the first item in the list that said free music. When we look at it, it has light control. So where the free music comes from, I have no idea. Let's give it a whirl. So let's launch the app. I've already registered it. And here we can see that it has detected the board as a as a bowl and we can see the same MAC address so we can be confident that uh, this is what we're talking to. 
I have a logic probe where we can check the RGB and W outputs to see what they're going to do. And we have just for reference our, our picture of the board here. So down in this corner will be the R output. So let's just probe on there. At the moment it's low. As we move around, we can see it cycling. We get it to 255 on the red. Indeed, that's fully lit. We move to the next one, which should be green. It would in fact appear to be blue. Not that as blue. And the next doesn't appear to do anything. And that should be blue. And finally, W. Ah, uh, that's cycling through. Any guesses which colour it's going to be? That's right, class. That's going to be green. So the W is in fact green, which means that the B, so that's red, blue, W. Now, how do we check W? Ah, there's the white, and well, there we go. So that we know that that's W. So there is some mismapping between the application and the board. That's not a big deal to us. We can now be confident that we can connect an LED strip or LED to these pins. The next question will be, how are we going to do that? It's air time. I've wired up the only strip that I could find. This is a 12 volt RGB strip. Due to lack of information, I have no idea what these uh, outputs are capable of, of syncing. But I guess inside of here is uh, a fairly common LED driver chip, which should be able to cope with 12 volts and uh, just a few tens of milliamps, I guess. There's only one way to find out. Um, either it will work or we're going to let the magic smoke out. Let's do it. Putting on the power supply there for the chip itself. Go to our app. No, so far, so good. Now I'm going to switch on the 12 volt power supply for the LEDs. Cross your fingers time. Well, clearly, although it appears to be working, it's definitely not working correctly. The colors are not distinct enough. Thinking caps on. Rereading the original product description, I come to the conclusion that my assumption that it had an LED driver was incorrect. It talks about an LED control algorithm which can make its external I.O. control LED driver, which is a bit vague. And similarly, supporting four-way LED control, we've seen that. Built-in LED driver control algorithm. It would appear that we need to build ourselves an LED driver circuit and then retest. Here is my lash up for driving the LEDs. Normally I would use um, an FET and channel FET to, uh, to drive things, but the only logic level ones that I have are for 5 volts. And as we remember, this guy uh, is only running on 3.3 volts logic. It's not going to be able to drive the FETs that I've got. I've reverted to uh, a standard arrangement from way back when. So the output from the ESP goes via a 1K resistor to the base of the transistor. The emitter is grounded and then the collector goes to the LEDs and then finally to the to the 12 volts. And I've put here tip 29. Uh, looking through my uh, ancient parts box, I happen to find uh, a bunch of these tip 29 NPN transistors which will do the job. And this one dates from 1973, so it's probably uh, a lot older than many of you watching this. Being of that vintage, and I've got another one here that's, uh, that's been through the wars, it'd be best to, uh, to check them out before we put them into the circuit. So yes, that one's fine. The guy is okay as well, so let's put them in circuit.
start the board first and we can fire up our app now that it's discovered that. Uh, let's switch on our 12 volts. The device remembers the last setting that it was on, which was obviously red here. Blue, green, red. And now we can cycle those round and it's working as it should. Perhaps we'll just put out the studio lights. So yes, we have our own uh, nice disco effect. Speaking of disco effects, this has got some very strange settings. I want to say that we can we can dim the LEDs just by this this bar here. We've actually got a microphone input, so now it's reacting to to my voice, which is uh, intriguing. So all in all, we've now managed to uh, get the device working. I'm quite happy with the way that it's working now. I just wonder if it can drive many more LEDs. Here I have most of a five meter length of LEDs. And as you can see by the corrosion here, they've been outside unprotected up to, let's see if we can get them lit. And back to the app now, and I've got them switched off. So I'll switch them on and there they are green. So blue, green, red, we're pretty much good to go. I hope you found that uh, investigation of interest. I'm going to be buying a couple more of these little guys. I want to program these things myself, and that's going to be another journey of mystery and imagination.